Hello everyone. Welcome to yet another session of our NPTEL on nonlinear and adaptive control. I'm Srikant Sukumar from Systems and Control, IIT Bombay. So I warmly welcome you uh, to this last week of um, lectures on this nonlinear and adaptive control. Um, and we have already completed four lectures in this. Uh, set of uh, lectures this week and uh, we started off uh, in this week looking at connections uh, between adaptive control and learning and uh, we are now focusing on a specific uh, problem of looking at uh, a multi-layer neural network which is being tuned uh, which is going to be tuned using an adaptive controller and this uh, neural network uh, this three-layer neural, neural network to be specific is uh, being used to design a uh, approximation-based controller for a robotic manipulator. So we do hope that the algorithms that we have been looking at will help you design uh, robust adaptive control algorithms for systems uh, like the aircraft, drone, spacecraft, etc., that you see in the background. Now, um, where we were uh, until last time was uh, basically, uh, you know, we had already seen, you know, what the robot dynamics uh, consists of in the joint space coordinates. And then we sort of also, uh, you know, you Define this nice backstepping variable, which is used for analysis. Um, and this is in terms of, of course, the tracking error. And the entire dynamics was, of course, uh, written in terms of this uh, backstepping error variable. And uh, this dynamics is what contains the nonlinear robot function. And this is essentially what uh, the neural network is used to approximate. Uh, this function is, of course, uh, depending on some variables uh, like e, e dot q d, q d dot q d double dot, which are, um, you know, uh, collected together in this x. And uh, using a estimation of this function using a neural network, which we'll see subsequently, uh, we define a controller. Right? And of course, um, it's not difficult to see. I mean, we're not, we're not doing that here. It's not difficult to see that if f tilde and tau t are in fact zero, so if these are not there, then this is a nice stable system, asymptotically stable system in R. And you can show that R goes to zero, which means that you can also show that E and E dot, right? Um, we of course showed some nice relationships uh, using this backstepping error variable design. Uh, we show that, you know, uh, that, that basically the E and E dot are bounded by the backstepping error variable norm, as you would expect. Then we have talked about a few properties like the positive definiteness of M, uh, boundedness of VM dot, skew symmetry of M dot minus 2 VM, uh, and the fact that the disturbances are bounded. Right? We did not look at the passivity properties. Uh, so uh, the idea is to estimate this uh, nonlinear uh, robot function. Right. This was the uh, sort of plan using the neural network, the three stage or the three layer neural network. Uh, we clubbed the unknowns weights, unknown weights W and V uh, inside this new variable Z. And then, of course, we made a few assumptions. The first one being that uh, the ideal value of weights are uh, bounded, right, which is a very reasonable assumption. We do that even in uh, projection based uh, adaptive control design. Um, then we also assume that the trajectories are bounded. This again, trajectory and its derivatives are bounded. Right? This is again another assumption we did make while uh, doing our standard adaptive control. Um, and finally, using this, we could uh, come up with the fact that the norm of x, that is uh, where x is this e, e dot, q d, q d dot, and q d double dot, is also bounded by q d and the norm of r. Again, not difficult to verify. 
uh, once you have made these assumptions. Uh, so then we of course uh, talk about linearizing the neural network, right? Because uh, what happens is that you have this nonlinear regressor parameter structure, uh, which uh, you cannot, uh, you know, define adaptive loss for. And even if you do define some kind of adaptation law, you will not be able to prove any stability. Which is why we, uh, you know, we we will we looked at some uh, Taylor series approximations, right? So V hat and W hat were the estimates and correspondingly we define the tildes, which are the estimation errors and also the error in the activation function values, right? And using that, we uh, sort of uh, gave an estimate for, uh, you know, this, this uh, sigma tilde, right? So sigma tilde had this kind of an estimate. And further, uh, we also, uh, you know, state the fact which said that this uh, square term is bounded in this way, right? So bound on the square term is of course obtained using this kind of an expression, right? This, this expression is simply obtained from 23. Yeah, so from 23, you obtain this, and from here you can actually prove this kind of a fact. So this uh, fact essentially says that for sigmoidal uh, radial basis function and tan hyperbolic functions, so these are the activation function examples we looked at, you do have this kind of a nice relationship. All right, great. Now, uh, now this is where we start this lecture. So, um, you know, so let's mark it first. Lecture number twelve point five, which is the fifth lecture of this last week. Yeah. So here, if you see the way we define f hat is again using just the estimates, right? We replace, uh, I'm sorry, we replace W by its estimate W cap and V by its estimate V cap, and that's it. And so V cap and W cap are the current estimated values. So this is what is your neural network functional estimate, right? So with this, uh, you know, you have this tau zero, which was the control we defined, right? And, uh, the con the true control okay so until now we had only the tau zero if you remember which was just these two terms right contained the functional estimate and a damping nice pd type of a term right proportional derivative type of a term uh, but now we also add some kind of uh, you know sort of a robustification input v and yeah, this is what we look at what this v can be later on but for now we introduce this robustification sort of input right? So this becomes your true control tau. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so V is basically, like I said, is a function to be detailed subsequently that provides robustness in the face of higher order terms in the Taylor series. All right. So, uh, so this is sort of the block diagram for this whole implementation. You can verify that this block diagram matches with the system equations, right? not too complicated. Uh, and, and of course, you've defined Q under bar and E under bar as this E, E dot and Q, Q dot sort of vectors. Right? So once we have this uh, modified control tau, right? we started with the tau zero and we added a robustification or we subtracted a robustification control V. So you have the tau right? and you substitute for that uh, and you get this sort of a closed loop system, right? You you already had this term. Right? This is not a new term, right? And then uh, this was the function, right? the true value of the function, if you may, where you have the ideal value of the weight w and v, and then you have the estimate w hat and v hat, and even the ideal value is somehow epsilon off from the true function, right? So the function is approximated as w transpose sigma v transpose x plus an epsilon. And you have this estimated value, then you have the disturbance, and then you have a, this robustification term, right? So then we do a little bit of manipulations, right? What is this manipulation? First, we add and subtract a W transpose sigma hat, okay? So that uh, sort of gets combined. So this you notice is W transpose sigma hat. So we already defined this notation. So this is actually equal to W hat 
transpose sigma hat in the notation we defined. So if you combine, uh, so so if you add and subtract w transpose sigma hat, one of it combines with this, the other one combines with this guy. So the combination with this will uh, will yield a w tilde transpose sigma hat because this is w hat transpose sigma hat and you have a w transpose sigma hat. So if you subtract one from the other, you get w tilde transpose sigma hat. And then this guy combines with this again to give you a w transpose sigma tilde. And so you get two terms by adding and subtracting the w transpose sigma. Right? So and then of course these three terms remain exactly as it is. And these three terms show no change. Great, great. So uh, now again we do another layer of manipulation, and we now uh, so first we added and subtracted W transpose sigma hat, and now we add and subtract W hat transpose sigma tilde. Right? Uh, why? Because this term and this term is what we are looking to sort of deal with. Right. So, uh, if you look at this term and this term together, uh, these two will combine to give you a W tilde transpose sigma tilde. And you will, of course, be left with a uh, W hat transpose sigma tilde. Right. So, that, uh, I mean, that term remains as it is here. And these two combine. To give you this term, right? Great. So now you had two terms here, and you now have three terms because of this addition and subtraction, right? It's just a rewriting of these terms, if you may. Okay. Now we start using all our Taylor series approximations that we did, right? Uh, so this Taylor series approximation is for this v tilde term, right? Sorry, it's for the sigma tilde term. Right, so this is where we use the Taylor series approximation. Uh, so, so if you look at this guy, it, it's retained as it is, and then you have the W hat transpose sigma tilde type term, right? Uh, and then you write some terms as what we call the disturbance term, or what the authors call as the disturbance term, right? So here. Uh, if you notice in the sigma tilde approximation, uh, you had several terms, right? So sigma tilde looked like this, right? I mean, if I mean, of course you have the this term, right? which had some bound, right? But then the key approximation was something like this. So this this uh, did we define any further notation? Let me see. This was defined as sigma hat transpose, I believe. This is called sigma hat transpose, this term. And then you have V tilde transpose X. So that's what is written here. Um, the sigma tilde here is written as sigma hat transpose, V tilde transpose X, right? And then everything else is sort of written as a disturbance, right? Including this guy. So this also has this, this comes, this comes to this, is the approximation right and then you have the second order terms which combine to give you this right and then you have epsilon plus tau d and the v is kept as it is okay so if you notice a lot of terms have been so the second order terms of corresponding to this guy and this guy combine to give you this yeah and uh, the first order term of this guy is written here and the first order term of this guy is also clubbed into the disturbance okay so rather interesting just a i would say um, <laughs> more or less arbitrary choice of what should be disturbance yeah i mean uh, here this w1 i mean it makes sense for these to be disturbance and of course also this because if you think of the second order terms to be small enough fair enough this is also disturbance but now thinking of this term as the disturbance is not very well justified right uh, so anyway so so we so they of course make some changes yeah so unfortunately using this 
error system does not yield a compact set outside which you have a negative Lyapunov function derivative, right? So which is what you needed. You need the Lyapunov function derivative to be negative at least outside a compact set. What is this compact set? This is what is the uh, residual set, right? So this what what they call this compact set is what is the how we have talked about the residual set and this is what is the residual set all right so uh so then they of course rewrite things a little bit i guess yeah uh, what is it that they do so this term is the same great then this term is again the same all right uh, yeah, this term is again the same. Then this guy is brought back in. And this guy is not put into the disturbance. So, uh, so this term, I believe, is brought back in. So because because so this term is the same here. Then you have W tilde transpose sigma hat, which is the same here, and then. Uh, this w tilde transpose sigma hat prime v transpose x is brought back in. Yeah, so this this term is put back, which is what I also said does not make sense to keep it out. Okay, and then this term remains as it is, and then a v, and now the w1 becomes a w, right? So this makes a little bit more sense, uh, right? And here. I believe what is left, uh, let's see carefully. Ah, I see the whole term is not brought back. Right, right, let's be careful. Uh, this, what is brought back is only the, so here you had the W tilde transpose sigma hat prime V tilde transpose. Yeah, and what is brought back is only the V hat transpose. Term. Right, and what is left is the V transpose term. Right, so because V tilde transpose is V minus V hat, so the V hat term is brought in here with the negative sign, and the V term is left out here. Okay, interesting. I guess the purpose of this is uh, primarily to make sure the Lyapunov analysis goes through, and of course, if W tildes are small, then this is sort of justified. Yeah, so if W tilde is small, then keeping this as disturbance. Is sort of justified in some sense. Okay, all right. And this is anyway a second order term, right? Uh, so yeah, I mean, so, so these these three being here was never a big question, but this uh, this being here and this being here does pose some questions. But then you have to sort of think of W tilde having some kind of a nice bound, and then you can um, say some nice things because X is bounded and all these quantities are also possibly bounded. Yeah, all right. Um, so of course, then we uh, need to you know get a bound on W. One to overbound W, right? So this is what is shown in this next fact. So the disturbance term thirty one, which is this guy W, is bounded in this way, right? Or of course, I mean it's it's probably nicer simpler type of expression here right so here you have some constant let's not worry about it then there is dependence on the z tilde which is expected because well w tilde appears here obviously as we bounded in z tilde and then there is bound correspond there is terms that have multiplication of z tilde and r uh, this also comes i believe from this guy because this second order term is bounded by v tilde times r so therefore the whole thing is bounded by z tilde times r norm of z tilde times r so z tilde is just v tilde and w tilde stacked right so this is again another bound uh, you know with respect to the state and the estimate bounds okay great so now once uh, we have all these bounds, we have this sort of a closed loop system with whatever we have declared as, as some kind of a disturbance, right? So this is our final, you know, system, uh, you know, with, with, with this kind of a disturbance term. 
right and so what we now want to do is uh, how to do the update propagation right so this is what is the important thing right we want to see how the updates are propagated right so it is required to demonstrate that uh, the tracking error uh, is suitably small and then the neural network weights remain bounded for only then the control is bounded right so this is important right so uh, if you assume a few things this is where the ideal case the back propagation tuning which is like the basic neural network tuning method uh, here there is a lot of idealization so the assumption is there's no net functional reconstruction error this sort of means that epsilon is zero right what's the next one there's no unmodeled disturbances and no higher order terms so essentially this second one means uh, d is zero sorry tau d is zero and the third one means that uh you know your unmodeled terms are gone so you have whatever uh not unmodeled the higher order terms are gone so o v tilde transpose x equal to zero so there are no higher order terms so if you make these kind of assumption uh so yeah it's as it's, it's as good as assuming that fx is linear function it's as good as assuming that fx is a linear function and then of course things are much more simpler you go sort of back to your typical adaptive control type domain all right so in that case this theorem uh, proposes a nice update law right, which is this guy and that guy right um, so so in fact in fact uh, this theorem is rather uh, nice because it looks directly at the w1 disturbance let the desired trajectory be bounded so there's a lot of assumptions actually suppose the disturbance is equal to zero okay and then you also assume that v is zero so this is very nice and simplistic i would say because you're assuming this w1 is zero which means you're sort of uh, assuming a lot of nice things not just this so this guy zero is okay right this this guy being zero is okay but then you're also assuming that this quantity is zero. okay so this is of course i mean i would say pretty restrictive right then the tracking error of is is go to zero and all that all the nice things happen because everything is nice and linear so you expect all the nice things to happen so uh see if uh so let's sort of think about it ah okay i see i see so if the higher order terms are zero then this being zero also makes sense so this is not such a bad i mean once you assume that there are no higher order terms that is if f is linear then this is zero I mean. so this is fine actually this term will be zero because sigma hat prime um you know is this this guy basically right this this sort of this guy so so the activation function that you have uh it's, it's there's no activation function per se i mean it is linear right so this uh this term is of course going to be zero all right so this term is of course going to be zero so because if there is say so if, if so basic point being that if f is linear then uh there is no higher order terms i have to see is this become zero is the question so this is the higher order term um if this is the higher order term do we need an uh, and and this is zero um then what is the activation function so do we need an activation function would be the sort of question um uh, yeah so this is also an interesting assumption i would say and right? because you're taking the derivative of the activation function with respect to an argument and uh, if the activation function if the if the overall function fx is linear then the question is do you need an activation function or do you even need the higher layers right so that's the whole point um yeah i believe the activation function becomes the identity function in this case yeah if the function f is linear then the activation function is simply the identity function so sigma of z is actually equal to z so if i take a partial it just gives me it, it just take the derivative it just gives me one so this quantity should be just one 
Yeah. I'm wondering if that is how it will be. But if this quantity is just one, then this is basically we had transpose x. So basically you don't have anything like a Taylor series expansion because this is, uh, I mean, in the linear case, this I believe will simply become V tilde transpose x kind of a thing. Yeah, there is no sigma. I mean, sigma is just going to be the identity function is what I believe will happen, right? And then, um, right, right. But then I wonder uh, what is the, I mean, this, why will this still go to zero? Why would this still go to zero is not very clear. Suppose the disturbance, I mean, here the authors are pretty much making an assumption that uh, W1 in 28 is pretty much going to zero. And so, so the question that we are trying to answer to ourselves is, of course, this is zero by the assumptions, no problem. But what happens to this term is a big question. What happens to this term is a big question. If it's linear, then uh, the activation function is linear and the derivative is simply one. But then I still have V tilde transpose X. So sigma tilde is basically v tilde transpose x and then I'll be left with w tilde transpose times v tilde transpose x. Okay. So this term, uh, it's not clear why this would be zero. So this term, um, so I would say uh, this guy, only possible if w tilde transpose v tilde transpose x is also zero yeah so if you assume that this is also some kind of a second order term in the parameter errors and the parameter errors are relatively small then yes this term also goes to zero yeah i mean this is a um, interesting assumption i would say this is an interesting assumption is what I would say. Yeah, I'm not very sure of how that will be. But if it does happen, then of course life is super simple. I take my usual Lyapunov function R transpose MR, which is what I would expect. And the second and third terms are basically, you know, these update law type terms. You, I hope you remember these kind of terms from your model reference adaptive control yeah, because the unknowns are matrices here, right? So you uh, you know, you sort of take the trace with some gain matrix F and G, just positive definite symmetric matrices. And then you, you take the derivative, uh, you get something like this. And if you substitute everything carefully with W and zero, all you're left with is uh, just these guys. Yeah, with W one equal to zero, all you're left with is just these guys. Uh, you, you sort of have uh, you know, and, and you sort of have these terms, uh, you know, if you substitute for R dot, you will have M dot minus two VM, which is going to go to zero. And then you'll have the nice minus KV term because of this guy. So this guy becomes this term. So that goes to zero because of the skew symmetry property. Then you have this nice negative term. Then you have all the, you know, sort of the tilde terms, right? So, sorry, uh, you'll have this sort of a tilde term, right? And that, uh, you know, of course, gets combined here nicely using the trace functions, right? And this, uh, this is what uh, uh, essentially lets you choose your v hat dot and w hat dot. So from from trying to make these quantities zero, right? So what I'm trying to see is which particular equation the authors have used here to substitute for r dot so here i have this is coming from just the derivative here right and this guy uh, is coming from the equation so here you have w tilde transpose sigma hat r transpose uh, so r transpose is of course from this so w tilde transpose sigma hat 
that's coming from here so that's this term so this term is due to this okay now if i look at this term this is the w hat term this is coming due to this guy yeah so this two terms uh, and so w1 is 0 v is 0 so none of these are there so now if i choose this kind of an update law everything is rather straightforward uh, you have a nice tuning function i mean you have this nice l dot is minus r transpose kvr which is of course a negative semi definite but you can prove that r goes to 0 and you're done yeah because r goes to 0 e and e dot also go to 0 all right great so what did we see today we started to um write the system under the control where we added a robustness term to the control right and then we uh, sort of uh, you know did some kind of nice uh, you know, clubbing of the disturbances some of it is based on intuition and other one more or less to help your Lyapunov analysis go through uh, and of course these are all based on some kind of approximation so none of the results that you get uh, will be like precise tracking etc it will all be boundedness results but then we started with this back, back propagation type tuning which helps you give uh, you know this kind of uh, uh, you know it sort of makes a i would say a, not a very good assumption that all the disturbances are essentially zero and uh, but then what it can also give you is uh, you had you know, zero tracking errors and things like that so it's a very very idealized situation but we do i mean this is sort of a first step you can use this back propagation tuning to still get some interesting results using this uh, neural network that is tuned via an adaptive control law okay so we will of course continue with this in our subsequent uh, final session also so i hope you're enjoying our discussion and i hope to see you again soon